Good afternoon and welcome to the Yes Marina circuit here in Abu Dhabi. I'm Zara Druitt welcoming you back to the 2021 Asian Le Mans series. Now what's special is that it starts in the daytime and ends at night. So of course, will the drivers be able to cope? And will, what are their strategies? Well, our commentators up in the booth will be able to tell us in detail about this. Graham Goodwin, Oliver Gavin, up to you. Thanks so much, Zara. And uh, yes, indeed, about to get underway for the first of two races this weekend at the Yas Marina Circuit in Abu Dhabi. Delighted to be joined again, as we are, for all the races this season by motorsport legend. He loves that. Oliver Gavin. <laughs> Ollie, great to have you again. It's great to be here. Yeah, looking forward to it. Bit of a different challenge this time. Daytime starts. It's pretty steamy out there at the moment. It's going to get cooler, but we're then going to be under the lights in full darkness. Yes, well. it is. It's going to be a big challenge here. You know, it's it's we are going to be transitioning from that period of running in the day, going through to the night, and that's going to be a big challenge for the drivers and also the teams and the engineers, all the crew. You know, those those those, those guys at Michelin are also going to be working hard. So yeah, it's it's going to be a it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be great racing. We had great racing in Dubai, and we're looking forward to these next two rounds over this these next two days. Uh, but before we do that, Ollie, take us around. Uh, virtual look at this Yas Marina circuit. Well, here we are, 21 turns here at the Yas Marina circuit, and at 5.54 kilometres through turn one, turn two, fast sweepers, then down into into four and five. You can get ping for track limits there, and then out of seven and down the long back straight here. You'll be reaching at a top speed V max of about nearly 300 kilometers an hour in a P2 car. Important eight and then nine, very important to get traction off of there, and then down another long run into turn 11. Then it gets tricky, and then it gets technical here through 12, 13, lots of off camber exits, and then through to the trickiest braking point on the track, 17, and then underneath that iconic bridge there by the hotel through 19 into 21, final final corner on the track and to complete one more lap of the Yas Marina circuit. Zara Droid here with Graham Goodwin at the Yas Marina circuit. Just looking at these magnificent machines, Graham, tell me what's the difference between the LMP2 and the LMP3s? Well, first up LMP3, the entry level into international prototype racing. These are the new second generation cars appearing for the first time in the Asia Le Mans series this year with something like 450 horsepower for its Nissan V8 engine. Then we move over to this beast. This is an LMP2 car powered by around 600 horsepower Gibson V8 engine. The grip from the tyres, the aerodynamics provided by this fantastic uh, bodywork, wings front and rear. You're looking for the difference between these two cars? That's fast, this is faster. Awesome, fantastic. Thanks so much, Graham. I can't wait to see them on track. And for more cool information like this, be sure to check us out on our social media platforms. Hello, it's Yifei Ye from T Drive Racing. We are here in Abu Dhabi. I'm going to talk you through one lap in uh, LMP2 class. So turn one and two into turn two and three. If you get everything right, it can be flat out. Now we're going to sector two coming with turn five, um, off-banking braking, easy to lock up the brake. Going to the slowest part of the truck, tight hairpin, downshift to first gear. A bit blind spot for this uh, prototype cars to see the apex and then all the way flat out at the, exit, at the exit. Coming to the fastest part of the truck, reaching almost at 300 kph. Downshift from sixth all the way to first gear. Bit bumpy braking, make sure to kiss the apex and stay left side of the truck to prepare for the turn 9. Exit slightly uh, trouble with traction, but coming to sector 3, approaching a GT, always tricky to overtake them just before the braking. Downshift from 6th to 1st gear, quite challenging hip, she uh, can ahead, right, left. Use a bit curb, but not too much. Slight wheel spin. Turn 14. Be careful on the exit throttle application. Now we are into uh, the hotel section. Quite challenging braking with a lot of uh, lateral load on the car. Downshift to first gear. Exit mid truck. Quite challenging double left hander with a lot of wheel spin. Exit running close to the guardrail on the right side. Coming to the second last corner of the truck. Exit running close to the banana and then now we are at the last corner of the truck. Slight overstay on exit but we just manage it well and then that's the lab around Yas Marina circuit. 
36 cars again for the start of the second race in the uh, Asian Le Mans series here at Dubai Autodrome. Two races in two days, a much more orderly start though, with the two G-Drive Racing Aris 01s uh, managing to keep one and two as Phoenix Racing's uh, Orica looked for a way past the Jota Sport car, the Era Racing car, uh, the number 18 car locking up, but uh, keeping it on the island. Malta Jakobsen in the LMP3 car there starting a run to the front. There was great racing too throughout this race in the 19 car uh, GT3 uh, category, a record here. And uh, one of the cars that would emerge towards the top of the proceedings would be the number 55 car. But it was uh, second place, by the way, for the Rinaldi racing car. After traumas yesterday at the end of the race, the locally based 40 GPX racing car uh, would finish this race, though, proudly on top. Win at home in Dubai for GP Extreme. In LMP3, uh, it was a great run at the start of the race for the number 15 car. Uh, and also, we saw as well sparks of genius from Nielsen Racing, number nine car out of luck, but Matt Bell came home in third position. Andy Merrick would bring the uh, number two United Autosport car in second position, but a repeat win, a second win for the number 23 car, United Autosports, 1 2 here in Dubai. They will go to Abu Dhabi as clear championship leaders after another faultless display from the team from Yorkshire. In LMP2 and for the overall, it was Nicky team that would bring back the bring home the Phoenix racing car, trying to chase down the second of the two uh, Aris Zero Ones, but Franco Colapinto just had too much pace today for the Dane. Uh, an impressive display from the 25 crew with the car on song, but the win would go to the number 26 car, another double winner here in Dubai. Excellent, faultless race from the 26 crew of drivers, the Algar Pro team that support G-Drive Racing here in Asia for a second year running. Uh, they too will go to the second part of the season as clear championship leaders taking a second win in succession in two days in Dubai. Week two for the Asian Le Mans series, race three, the first of two at the spectacular Yas Marina circuit in the capital of the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi. Another pole position for the Aris 25 car from G-Drive Racing, uh, topping the order in the first race at Abu Dhabi. Another pole two in LMP3 from United Autosports 23 Ligier with a 10 car class. And in the GT class, it would be a first pole position for the Hub Auto Racing car, their brand new Mercedes AMG TG3, with a real turnaround in the order in the class. Long hold, there they go. And foul, good start, but the 26 car look at, looking for a way up the inside. There's no way through there. The Jota car immediately around the air remote sport car. And up the inside of the 26, there's a poor run through turn one there for the 26. Loses third place to the, the uh, 64 car. And the Jota car all over the back of the 26. Meantime, it's getting very tight indeed as they come down to the little flick flack there. This hairpin bend before they fire themselves off down this long, long back straight up to about just over 300 kilometers an hour for the LMP2 cars, Ollie. Yeah, John, John Phelps definitely dropped back. I think he, he did have a clash. I think he did have a clash with the with the Phoenix car at, at turn one and he was very, very slow off of there and the 26 snuck through and now is, is making his way Rennie Binder. Bit of a lock up for the racing team India car up the inside of the 25 goes Tom Blomqvist, it is indeed John Phelps that's dropped back. John will be disappointed with that. Today, I think turn one was his bit of undoing. He was on the, the messy stuff on the way in. And up the inside of the 64 goes Tom Blomqvist, looking to make amends. Big shunt for Blomqvist in one of the test sessions. Yeah, it was a full rebuild for this car, the 28 car. It's put in two very solid races so far. Safety car here. Safety car. And that is because we've got a car stalled. Stuck. Well, that car has started. It's turn one. Yes. It's, 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 it's got, it's got it off the grid. Yeah. It's one of the United cars. Oh, yeah, here we go. Going to go back to green here. here and immediately, Rennie Binder controls that field. We'll take them across to green. Away we go. Keeping it nice and smooth through here. Five and six. Don't take too much curve. Make sure you get good drive off of here so you're right on his gearbox when you come up to seven. A good slingshot off. Tom's. Pretty good, and it looks like a good, good drive off there. He should be able to get this done. Well, why did that say 28 then? Yeah, that's, I don't, I'm not It's car 23. It's car 23. It's the. It was the pole setter. That is the pole setter. Safety car deployed again. And it's 
also the championship leading car. Yeah. That is big dramas, huge dramas for United Autosports here. Safety car deployed for a second time. Is he going to do the same again this time? He put in two very solid drives in Dubai, Ollie. Yes, he did. He really did. He was um, absolutely the cornerstone of their, their results. Tom Blonkers will be looking to, to, to get a good jump here on Matthias Kaiser. This is his opportunity. Binder's gone, and Blomqvist isn't quite close enough, I don't think. There are our leaders in GT, 88 from 89, on the back of that uh, stream of LMP3 cars, and there's plenty of GT action. Yes. They're uh, solid run, the Garage 59 cars. And in fact, it's a Aston Martin 123. It is. Got a conger of GT3 cars behind. The gap uh, from fourth to fifth now is almost six seconds. It can be very, very tough when you're trying to deal with that level of traffic and that level of pressure and just try to make sure that you're just hitting your routine, your, you know, you the points on the track that you're using, all your references, you know, whether it's a break point or with turning in point or, you know, just a natural flow. And when you've got cars behind or around you, that can, it can throw you off your game. And... Uh, the 89 car just running a little bit wide there, just got in a little bit deep on the brakes and lost the rear. Looks to me, by the way, as if Johnny Adam is catching this pair. Just yeah. bit by bit, Renny Bender managing to hold him at the moment to that to that second position. 0.8 of a second last time they went across the, the line and pulling away from Matthias Kaiser, this pair. Four seconds to the good now. Yep. And MP3, meanwhile... Uh, Young Malta Jakobsen is making it stick now. 2.05, last time around 2.07 for the second place car. He's got something like nine seconds ahead of the second placed car in LMP3 with Dwight Merriman in the number 18 era motorsport car in between the pair of them. Yes. So, I mean, in, in LMP3, that the DKR car is was P2 now and they had, they'd had a, a strong run in qualifying. But... Um, Dropped away in that in that second qualifying session for, for race four, yep. but um, the DKR car has been fast. It has. Uh, well, it's not been as reliable. Yeah. Um, which has been to the massive detriment of their run at this title. Uh, that's uh, by the way. If, if you're wondering why that Castle car was holding, again as in Dubai, every class aside from LMP2 must serve three 110 second pit stops during the races. That's to do with just allowing some of these newer teams just take out the kind of the edginess, the panic, you know, live fueling in a pit lane, maybe yes. new for a lot of these teams. And, and also uh, for a lot of the drivers. Absolutely. The important thing is to be fast on track, and uh, the rule is the same for everybody, aside from LMP2. No, he's... Um He's doing a fine job in that. Right. There is Liam Tolbert. He is falling further back into this group. Liam now down into seventh position. Fissi Keller is ahead. That will be David Perel ahead. Manuel Lauk um, also looking for a way by, as is the 57 car. That is the other Kessel car. This is the Kessel Racing by car guy, Cobb Ledegar. Yeah. Cobb will be looking for a rapid way forward here. He is a professional driver. Um, for him, actually... The uh, position in this pack. Oh, oh that was that contact. was that was a pretty big contact at that. Just the bronze driver though, yeah, so far. That's true. And we've got does up the inside goes goes Katzberg. Is he going to make that stick? Yeah. I Forces think. the McLaren wide a little, and now we're going to see who's got the ponies in a, a straight line. Yeah. As the leaders come up to lap them. Yep. That's going to make it tricky for the LMP2 leading uh, pair to get by. They're going the, the long way around. That has helped the. 26 car enormously. Yeah. Com is getting a little uh, frustrated in the Kessel car, I think, with Liam Tolbert. Somebody's having to turn 11. Just seeing that on the display. Oh, there's oh. a car on the wall. Is that the DKR car? It was an orange car. 12, and he's gone he over. Is, oh, he's, yeah, is he reversing it back out? Yeah. I'm not sure. And we're still not seeing. There we go. It is the, it is the DKR, DKR car. car. Yeah. So we'll just uh, wait for a moment. Oh, two. Was he just just oh. pinched the nose off the 93 car there, and it's the ebb and flow. Just so of quickly, traffic. and this has closed it up again. These things can, as you say, ebb and flow so very quickly. This, by the way, is the battle between second and third in LMP3. Tony Wells, it is there as the two. Well, this could be an opportunity. Oscar Bike, it could, couldn't it? It's a matter of just which way 
Is Walker's going to look? He's looking racy again. He can see the opportunity, can't he? Yeah, he can, but he's not close enough. Again, I think that he's got he's got enough to get to the gearbox of, of Binder, but he hasn't got enough to get by. Then comes the 64 car. This is about on, on the yep. schedule. It's about 40 minutes on fuel, but of course we've had those laps under the safety car, so we should start to see the LMP2 cars coming in now for their first regular pit stop. A little tardy on getting the uh, fuel probe on the side there. It's almost like that they had to wait for it completely to stop and everything to be stationary, and then he went for the hit on the uh, on the fuel probe. So Naveen Rao will stay aboard the car. And this is the only class that is it's not a timed stop. That they, they can just go whenever they're, they're done and they're happy to go. So the key here is, is it fuel or is it fuel and tyres? Yeah, and it's, it's just fuel. fuel. But multi Jakobsen, I mean, he's, he's been the class of the field here today. Well, in the LMP3, 45 seconds up now. That's yeah. that's what we were talking about at the start of the race. And just think where how far ahead he would be if he hadn't had the two safety car periods. Well, he's pulled out a second a minute, including two safety cars. It's impressive. It's very impressive. And that's the other thing that Tom could have been doing all the time. He's behind Rennie. He could have been fuel saving, fuel saving, looking to to make that jump in the pit lane. Yep. Maybe the Jota boys are going to be on that. Maybe they'll short fill him. Absolutely. The Phoenix car also. You can see the background there. The green car just grinds along pit lane. Matthias Kaiser came in 23 seconds back off that, that uh, lead battle. So it's hung on in there, but it's been dropping time. And uh, by the way, out in the 25 was not John Falb. That wasn't him going on to a second stint. It was Franco Colapinto. Oh, was it? So they've had a driver change in the 25 car. And uh, tucked up behind again, looking for an opportunity that maybe traffic will offer him. He's got the toe here, hasn't he? He has, but he, Sean just needs to place his car in the right spot here. But has he? It's a gutsy look up the inside. He kind of knew he was there, which is good. It's now just going to be about the run off of this corner. And Esther Martin getting involved there briefly. Yeah. It's the better run out of that corner, though, and it's ahead. Yeah, but it's going to be another drag race down into turn 11. He's on the wrong side of the road this time. Binder's on the wrong side, but um, he's going to go around the outside. Wow. It's a strong move. It was a better, it was certainly a better exit from the flick flack at the end of the back straight. And Khalil had to give best there. Let's have a look back at the highlights of that first hour with 35 cars starting this third race in the Asia Le Mans series. This quick fire program. John Fowle got a good uh, start from the, uh, the race, but then ran wide in turn one, lead going the way of Rennie Binder in the sister car. It's a flurry of activity in GT with Com Ledegar giving Liam Tolbert a helping hand, shall we say, around. But it's been the Garage 59 Aston Martins that have led the way in a race. We've already seen two safety car periods, both of them for dramas for United Autosports and MP3 cars. Battling away in LMP3, Nielsen Racing's number nine car and the 33 car of CD Sport. Tony Wells holding, up, holding off. Uh, Nick Adcock, 15 car though, leads the way in LMP3. This is uh, Malte Jakobsen pushing very hard indeed uh, and pulling out a very big lead to do that for his uh, bronze teammates to defend. The lead of the race, we've seen multiple cars there, but good to see Tom Blomquist in some form. But uh, the 26, Rennie Binder, has been the form man through this race and again has ground out that lead and kept the 26 ahead. Are they heading to the title? He's looking for a good drive off of seven, lining the car up for in, into eight. And traffic ahead here. Yep. This is the, in fact, the GT lead battle. This could be an interesting moment in this race yep. as we get into the second hour. He wants to now be using this traffic in front of the Phoenix car as a bit of a pick. Getting that, looking to get a really good run off of here, down into 11. This is going to be the first race, the first race series. Colapinto has really experienced traffic of any sort. Single seaters at this point, and precious few of that as well. He's got a big lunge up the inside here, though. Yeah, that was very optimistic. <laughs> he was trying to back out of it. But he's going to take the position. Wow. He's. <laughs> Well, he's, that's the speed of his brain, and it's he's just thinking about it. And it's yeah, confidence. And he's just looking at the, every opportunity. Indeed, we are in the midst of now of the LMP3 stops. Tony Wall's dropped back out of the top three. So multi Axum's out of the car. Oh, 
Well, our M Sport go to work. Yeah. Remember, not too rushed here. It's a, it's a 110 second stop. Ardini getting in. But it's just all about now just being clinical with your, with your stop, making sure that you're just doing everything in a nice, smooth way. No sort of getting flustered or trying to rush it. Out of the way of the 26 car. It was very good of him to get out of the way. 26 come out of Rennie Binder is 5.3 seconds to the good. Got a Pinto. What's the gap now? It was, what, 30 seconds to the leader. So the carriage 59 car in the hands of Maxi Martin goes through for another lap. So it's two laps different between the fuel stints on the, their two cars. And in fact, um, that car now, with the pit stops of cars ahead of them, is up into, I believe, seventh place now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe Maxime was doing that from the get-go. It was just fuel-saving, fuel-saving, and seeing how far he could go. Uh, he is going to have a, a maximum drive time, though, isn't he? Yep. Let's uh, go and find out what's going on with RLRM Sport. Uh, Zara downstairs with the pits with Malte Jakobsen. Tyler, our garage here with Malte. Malte, we noticed there were safety cars out there, but you managed to stay in front. How, how did it all go? I mean, it was... A hard stint at the beginning because we had two safety cars, so it was a bit difficult to keep heat in the tires, but I managed to do it and I pulled out a really big gap to my teammates and I enjoyed all of the stint. So now I will watch from here and we will see what it brings. Um, that was an exceptional stint from Malte Jakobsen. There's Basha Mardini doing what he can do now to defend the advantage that's been built up. Ares car in for a second stop here something going on here Keep looking around the back of the car uh, also in by the way Maxime Martin you can see further down the pit lane in the number 88 garage 59 car climbed as high as seventh before that was necessary but uh, Johnny Adams stays out in the 97 with GPX racing car by the way now ahead of the 99 he's managed to make his way by he has indeed going to be wanting to do this in a fast and Discipline way. Johnny Adam, meanwhile, in the woman racing with TF 97. Yeah, he's jumping out. Absolutely, Didn't that see. will be Johnny's time done. Not sure he's jumping in. I would guess at this point at Armand Al Harty. Yeah. Armani driver and long time flag carrier for his nation in GT racing. And with no little success yep. in Aston Martins with TF Sport. Yeah, well drilled boys at TF Sport. They are indeed. Yep. And they're away with the, the tyre change. Big success for this team. Based in the south of England, under the TF is Tom Ferrier. And uh, followers of the British Touring Car Championship back in the day will remember Tom as well. Yeah. I mean, sitting there saving the fuel behind all the other cars when he was when they were all squabbling over positions and he was just being smart. So, uh, Rennie Binder now leads by 4.3 seconds. That gap, what is it, 30 seconds we called it to uh, Colapinto. 17.5 seconds now. Yeah, it's, he's making some great progress there. But all three lead cars in the well, 157.8 from Colapinto last time, 158.5 uh, from Sean Gallel, 159.9. Perhaps with some traffic for the leader, Rennie Binder, but it's been another very, very solid uh, race from the Austrian. Whilst we're talking about Alan, we're going to go down to uh, Zara, who's got his teammate Axel Jeffries in the pit lane. Yeah, you know, I feel pretty good. Uh, honestly, it was quite a chaotic start. There was a lot going on, and the main objective for us is uh, the championship. So it's quite hard to attack and stay out of trouble at the same time. Uh, unfortunately, the first few laps, we lost quite a lot of time behind uh, the Mercedes. But once we managed to get by, we managed to put our heads down, uh, caught the leading pack, and I think we got up to fourth uh, and ahead of our championship rival, so ultimately that was the goal. Here's the lead battle, and in a hurry now to get through Rennie Bender on the Era Motorsport number 18 car. The car run by Jota Sports. There's not an easy way around there. Tucks to the inside, we'll get through. But that has allowed Sean Gallel to close in again. So the gap is, it was a second at the, at the line. Meantime, Progress from behind for Franco Colapinto. 13 and a half seconds now from the lead. Yep. 12 and a half seconds from Galeo, who's not cleared. The 18 does note. So now, and again, 
battle joined. So a close battle in LMP2 for the lead with another rapid Aris closing in on this pair. LMP3 still a big gap from Basho Madini down to Tony Wells. So here's the uh, I don't know, maybe it is maybe it is scheduled. Here's the 26 car. Okay. Rennie Binder out of the car and uh, that looks like uh, Habsburg getting yeah. in. Uh, Rennie will be extremely happy with his uh, performance today. Correctly another, so. Another fine, fine drive. And he's just setting these boys up for another strong result. Yeah, and um, to the lead then, for the moment, Sean Galeel. This is shaping up to be quite a race at the end here in LMP2 if yeah. we run without caution. Yeah. Let's see how far he can stretch the fuel window. Dealing with the traffic in the manner of the Phoenix number four, Ligier. This is Phoenix Racing's LMP3 debut, as well as LMP2. And coming up now on the 35 car, that is Sammy Matitrugan, Finnish driver, virtual racer, being given an opportunity in the Asia Le Mans series by BMW Motorsport. It's a full course yellow, debris on track, exit turn 19. Debris will be cleared, I'm sure, very quickly indeed. We'll get back to green flag running. We should be able to have a chat with Rennie Binder down in pit lane. Yeah, that was a really good start for us. Uh, I managed to race always uh, in the lead. Unfortunately, there were two safety car periods in the beginning of the race. As I always made kind of a gap, but uh, then always the field came together again. Uh, but the restart was always pretty good. Uh, the car felt amazing. I could uh, pull a little gap to the shoulder car. Unfortunately, now I saw they got lucky with the pit stop uh, a bit with the full course yellow, but uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, we just need to stay focused to our race and it will be fine. Turn 21, you're going to lose a good chunk of time. Let's see what I can do about finding a gap in um, LMP3. Looks to me as if Tony Wells is at a second stop. Now, why has Wells been down pit lane a second time? Let's yeah. have a quick look and see what we can find out with Tony Wells. Rui Pinto, Dandrada is. He's got, a, got the pace down to, to two minutes, but it's still lacking some pace. Ferdinand Hansberg has just done the fastest lap of the race, a 57.157.1. So he is pressing on. Yep, that gap is coming down. And this is exactly what we wanted to see, whether Habsburg could respond to something like this and pull out a, a real star performance. For a race at uh, Yas Marina. Third position in GT through the hour. It was the Oman racing with TF 97 Aston Martin. Score break. With the 88 Garage 59 Aston pushing forward in second and the Sesta car completing a 1 2 3 through the hour, which will be putting smiles on fans of the Great British Mark. In the um, LMP3 class, battle between the CD Sport car and the number nine Ligiers of Nielsen Racing, Tony Wells. Pushing on and looking to do what he could do to bite into the lead. Built up by Melty Jakobsen for RLRM Sport, the number 15 car. It's a battle through the hour, but the 15 car going well. In the hands now of Bashar Mardini to defend the mighty lead built up by the young Dane. And they'll be looking forward to what lies ahead there. In LMP3, it's all about a battle between the two G Drive Racing. Aris cars, 25 of the 26. This is a battle for the lead between the 26. Really Binder fending off Sean Galeel. But then the 28 car from Jota getting a bit of luck with the timing of a full course yellow. And Sean Galeel in a big lead now under attack from afar from Ferdinand Habsburg. These GT cars battling very hard indeed in the last hour of this race. Here's a Phoenix racing car looking for a way past the 99 with a 63. It's had time in the barrier earlier on this race. Yet further 
woes for DKR that just it, their luck just has not been there this 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 year in the Asian Le Mans series. Their debut year in the series. Hope they're back. Yeah. I'm very familiar for waiting for the stewards at two and three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. That's just my life trouble. Back to the racing. Number yeah. 89 it is. But uh, is in the hands of Yuki Nomoto. Leads the way in GT yeah, with about eight seconds on Valentin Hart's clot. He's doing a nice job. They're both doing a nice job here. Yeah. Yeah. So Yuki Nomoto uh, spent his time last year in the Italian GT Championship, I believe. Uh, but uh, launches onto the international scene with this effort from the Garage 59 squad. Team co-owned by Andrew Cacotti, the aforementioned, Chris Goodwin, no relation, and Alexander West. This is the team that came out of the uh, efforts that uh, people might remember as CRS back in the day. Tony Wells will need to make a stop as in comes the CD Sport car from second. This can make, a, make quite the difference. Well, that is... Is this where we get Adam Oteke in yeah. the car? Well, which this is going to be an interesting moment then. So Malta Jakobsen has done his time in the RLR car. So just um, Max Hanratty to come there. Michael Jensen seeds the seat in the 33 car. To, I'm sure that's Adam Oteki in that car. I'm sure the RLR M Sport uh, crew will be looking uh, at each other with open eyes and thinking what could be here there'll be a lot of pressure though on Maxwell Hanratty yes Duncan Tappy making his way so how's Duncan going and the answer there is fifth yeah and in close proximity to Adam Ateki that's a battle for position battle for fifth position as the two of them try to make their way up through the GT traffic but he's had laps in traffic that have been five, six seconds off that. It's just like the, the tyre is just in just in and out of that window for operating and he can't quite keep it in there uh, to get the most grip just from those me, Michelins. He just doesn't like this circuit. It's, 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 we've not seen the pace or the consistency we saw from the Portuguese driver no. at Dubai. Nothing close to it. Talking to, to, talking to Stu earlier on in the week, he, he did sort of allude to that, that his drivers aren't the biggest fans of this racetrack yep. but you know it's that last sector there that can I think frustrate some drivers and maybe he's just not really getting um, getting the most from the car and he's he's not maybe maintaining and keeping that heat in the tyre and maybe he's just not got the flow got that rhythm that consistency that he needs just to keep everything in that in the spot that he needs it to, to, to unlock the lap time so the gap is coming down pretty quickly. He's taken something like 20 seconds out of Sean Galel in this oh, stint. Oh, that's spin a spin. Was that I think it's BMW. BMW. 35, 35 car. Oh, and he's got damage. He's been helped around. It looks like the rear wing. He's been helped around, I think, maybe by someone. The cars can yeah. see him, but still not pleasant, is it? See no. cars barreling through to watch you. But you're right, that car's got significant rear wing damage. Oh, he's that's significant damage we can't see on that side of the car. Oh, he's been, he's been hit hard. That's that's somebody's bumper. It is. So we're going to see who the. Um, oh no, it's his, it's his, his own. Bumper. <laughs> it's his own. Okay. So he's. Oh, been the, look at the left rear. The yeah, left rear is the, the the rear of the car. So this is for position, by the way, between the you know the remaining United Autosports car and the CD Sport car. Sean Galel tries to deal with those two cars and make good his escape. The gap last time around was 38 seconds. We're waiting to see what it is that uh, Habsburg can do. It's just gone up a little to 39, but that would have delayed Galeil on this lap. Two quick LMP3 cars as the stricken 35 car makes its way offline down the main straight, back into the circuit, back towards pit lane. But uh, not good. Rear-wheel drive car with that kind of damage. No, they're, um, that's, that's going to be out of the race. They're going to yep. be done for the day. The difference in lap times are still about six seconds. So Matt is taking chunks out of this. Yeah, he is. He's really eating into that lead. So we'll just sort of see how that's going to play out the rest of the race. He needs to be a referee, but there's going to be plenty of time to, to work on that with still another gentleman driver to come in the 
our last uh, M Sport car, and remember, only two drivers in the Nielsen racing car. So driver time, don't think is an issue for Matt here. No, it's not. He's into the end. And I fancy him for that gap. I have to say. Yeah. Still waiting to see. Colin Noble is now aboard, by the way, the Nielsen racing car. So that car has been in for another stop. Yeah. Uh, but he's way down as a result of the outer sequence stop earlier. Duncan Tappy is still in pursuit. He is something like 50 seconds back from Matt Bell. But Adam, Him and Adam Ateki are really going at it, aren't he, they? He, so. you know, it could well be that we're looking at the top three, yep. second, third and fourth, depending on just how what's left by way of strategy, what's left by way of pace from the RLRM Sport uh, car, which has led for, so far, two mm. hours and 24 minutes. So the 35 car's been pushed into the garage, it's on the skates. Yeah, and that will be a real disappointment to the Volkenhurst Motorsport crew. Yeah. Instant involving cars, 15 and 35 is under investigation. And that is Basha Mardini, that's the lead car in an MP3. As he makes his way on, there's the TKR car. And there is Colin Noble. Now, surely they're not going to let that stand. He clearly took advantage at the, the, chic the chicane, which I think is where he made the move. Yeah. I think that that's going to get um, looked at by, by the stewards. Um, well, for Colin, he needs to keep his head, get his head down. He's in the wheel tracks of the chicane, flashes the lights. Yeah. So Ferdinand Hatzberg's come in. He's made another stop. And uh, I think he's continued in the car. He has indeed. So to see where that plays out once Joe's a stop. Got FAA still to come. So FAA will be in for what looks like probably in the last 50 minutes. Yeah. Leads Reno Mastronardi in the number 55 Rinaldi racing car. And uh, Reno has been in for... Well, actually, almost identical period of time. So that, that is more or less on the same kind of strategy as the lead 97 car. Third position, Marcus Gomez in the, the MG. And still with Raffaele Marcello to come in that car, of course. Yeah. The gap between those two cars, the 55 and the 1, is just four seconds. Yeah. And 55 has still got um, David Rigon to play. So that's looking like that could be quite the battle. That's going to be a good scrap. LMP3, it is Matt Bell continuing to work on that big lead from the RLRM Sport crew. And that's now down to 41 seconds and still closing at around three seconds a lap the last couple of laps here. And that 15 car is under investigation, isn't he, with the contact with the he 35. Is. And there's the yellow flags at turn one. Uh, what is going on yeah, there? Yeah, I've got to see what's happening here. And that oh, is car spun. That was a prototype. The on the inside. Further down. That was a, so it, maybe it wasn't Galel. Let's have another look here to the inside. You can see just here to the inside. I think the car's gone. Oh, oh no, it's just underway now. And it, it is... It's the, I think it's the 64. But it was the Racing Team India car in the hands of Arjun Maini, who's uh, who'd nosed into the wall on the exit of Turn 1. Doesn't appear to be major damage there, if any. No. Sean has continued. So after Sean, the stop. Yep, indeed. TF Sport car just looking to go up the inside of it. And this well, is the this. 97 car, um, Ahmed oh. Alhati. Yeah, there's a bit of debris on the track there. It looks like somebody had run through one of the um, the bollards. This has been a good run from this uh, number 97 car. Yeah. We saw the two. Garage 59 cars playing their pro jokers start of the race. Armand Alhati has put in a very solid run here. And he's got a more than reasonable lead over the cars behind, but will always a, a stop here. Yeah, some 27 seconds he's in front, it seems, there of the, the uh, Marcus team. Gomez car. Yeah, Racing India goes through, and I think being bottled up behind the traffic and with the battle with Sean Galel underway that is helping Arjun Mine to make good his escape here from Kelvin van der Linde. Yep. So let's see how things unfold here in GT but it's 
it's certainly shaping up to be a very strong finish. Look at the hotel. Oh, wow. Look at the hotel. <laughs> oh, wow. We're, that. We're expecting that. That's fantastic. Oh, very nice from the management of the W Hotel. Picking your way um, through. Actually, oh, no, not quite there. I think Arjumani's got the right line through here. Yeah, but the exit might be poor here, and he might be able to slingshot off the back of him. Feisty run through that corner from Kelvin van der Linde. He's yep. right in the toe here as well. This could be interesting. VMAX, remember, around 300 kilometres an hour at the end of this straight. Will 301 do? It might. He dives the inside. Oh. Oh, this is... Yeah, he's certainly getting racy. Yeah, clattered it over the kerbs there. Good runoff of here, down into turn 11. What a pleasure it is to say, Indian versus South African in LMP2. Deep Big on the bolt. brakes. Wow. Bold move they, there. They didn't quite make it, ducked out, but well done, Kelvin van der Linde. I think realised danger was there. So Ferdinand Hadsberg's now got that lead down, or that gap down to 36 seconds yep. to Sean Galil. Right, that, gap, that gap came down to about 32, 33. It's gone out a little. So it's ebbed and flowed, I think. Yeah. Now we're in traffic uh, uh, margins rather than sheer pace margins, but it's been a good run from Sean Galil. Yeah, if we want to watch this this battle here with the, the Phoenix car of Kelvin van der Linde, he's going to he's gonna go, do, yeah, he's gonna do something <laughs> here. Get ready, everybody. There he goes. And up the inside. This time, I think he's got this done. What can Arjun Marley do to fight back? The, all he can do here is uh, keep it uh, neat and tidy. That's not going to be enough at this point, but he's got a good run out of that turn. It's not done yet, Arjumaini. He should be fine now to the finish. Yep. If we have that, uh, that scrolling message on the... Th that is great. Yes, awesome. Um, 95 car through on the 34. And uh, that is not for position. At the moment, we have Chandler Holt, the young American racer. 97 that's led the race twice yep. this afternoon into this evening. They make their pit stop now. That is Ahmed Al Harti. And Hub Auto are in at the same time in the Indeed. Mercedes. So, so this is beginning to shake out towards an exciting finish, isn't it? Yep. Racing Team India make their stop behind. That's Arjun Baini coming to a stop. And that will not be the final stop for the 64. But it will be the final stop for these GT cars. Let's have a look at the last hour of action. This was 97 and 66 having a bit of a tussle as the... 27 car in the mix for the GT lead. 55, great weekend it had at uh, Dubai last time around and moves back into the mix for a potential podium finish. But uh, the TF, the Oman racing with by TF car, very much in contention. Number three from United Autosports in a long battle with the CD Sport car, but CD Sport cars drop right back with a long pit stop. Two cars. Involved there with the lead. Aris, 15 car in the hands of Basha Mardini, defending a big, big lead. And the, the top of the race by Malta Jakobsen, but would drop down the order with problems a little later. Number nine in the hands of Colin Noble. Moving into podium contention, at least. This is Kelvin van der Linde getting to grips with the LMP2. He's going to be looking to try to close down the 25 car from G-Drive. Sean Galil, it is in the 28 car that is going to lead the race and has done throughout this hour great performance from the Indonesian. This, well, four course yellow is going to help them enormously. Yeah, but is it going to help them enough? And, um, I think Sean Galil's got five laps on this stint to go. The 63 going in the box. That's... Bad news again for the DKR engineer. They just haven't had the luck, have they? No, they've had a rough run. And but they're in a they're in a big push here to get something fixed. Yeah, there you go. Big it's, push. It is indeed. It's bits of Ferrari and bits of Aston Martin, me thinks. A nasty place, by the way, for marshals to clear that because there's not a good line of sight there, is there? No. So quite correct that the marshals to recover that. Debris will need to be protected by that full course yellow and they'll be given the instruction to go when race control is absolutely clear. Alex West, meanwhile, will have taken that position from Nick Nielsen, but he too owes us a stop. In is the 28 now, so they're, they're stopping right away, as of course they should. They're not going to make it home um, without stopping again. So stop while you're going to lose less time on track. Yeah. It's going to be, though, unless we have another caution, a splash and dash 
deep, deep into this race from uh, the Jota car, unless we have another caution. We're back to green. We are back indeed to green. We'll wait and see where Sean Gallel comes out in this one. But that has shaken things up a bit. But I think you're right. I think it's handed an advantage. Not a very big one. Julian Anzlauer, by the way, um, completed that lap just ahead of Mike Benham, who is now pitted for his final stop. So they've been forced to pit under green, unfortunately. Couldn't quite make it around yeah. under full course yellow. With Robert Renner some seven seconds back from Julian Anzlauer. So we'll, we'll let the, um, the lead cars in each of these battles complete a, a racing lap. Then we'll call these gaps as they are in racing terms rather than on the timing screens. As you recover from a full course yellow, that can often give you a false impression. Oh, 26 is off the track. 26. And that is a second eight. place car. Was it turn eight? Turn eight. And that's, uh, that's high speed if there's something going on there. And it's not got back on speed yet. No, he's, he's got a bit of a problem here. And remember, this is the championship leading car. He's going again now. So now we'll call it. Sean Galeel, uh, something like two minutes to the good now after that moment for Yifa Ye. And that takes the pressure off the Jota man with 41 minutes to go. Nine seconds apart and healthy advantage. 23 seconds ahead of Raffaele Marcello. We'll look at those lap times as they start to emerge. Yep. The AMG man in third position. And all of those lead cars have taken a third and final required stop. Nicholas Nielsen is just nine seconds back from Marciello. David Aricon is right with Nielsen. Colin Noble leads the LMP2 battle just six tenths of a second ahead. This is the lead battle in LMP3. Head of the team car, Matt Bell. We think there might be a bit of team orders in play here. So final lap. It is the final lap. Time is up. And it's time to say congratulations, I think, here to Sean Galel. He's been a race winner in the Asian Le Mans series before in the previous era of LMP2. And it looks very much as if he's going to add to that record, that winning record in this number 28 car. Part of a new era for Jota. He will go to the final race. Well, head hell high after what's been a difficult week for him. And two corners to go. Sean Galel, Tom Blomquist, Jota, the number 28 Orica, will be the winners of round three of the Asia Le Mans series in 2021. A big wiggle on the final turn, but that will be one very happy young man. Oh, it's a fine way to repay his boys as Isn't well. Isn't it just... Keep the discipline here, fellas. This is a dream finish for the Nielsen Racing team after one hell of a week. That will be massively appreciated by the team, whether or not it'll please Matt Bell. But home comes Colin Noble. Oh, and it's a spin at the very last turn from... That's the 25. That's Colin Pinto. It's the only thing he's really done done wrong. It's Rafi Marciello falling to contact, fifth position. Contact two Ferraris off. 57. Is that the final turn as well? It was. That wasn't the 60, was it? It's the Kessel car guy. An Ironman stint from Sean Galeel earns Jota Sports their first win in the 28 Orica. Nielsen racing a 1-2 after excitement in LMP3 and troubles for the United Autosports team early on. In GT, it was another Porsche 1-2, GPX Racing taking the win, but signs are that it's going to be a lot closer in race four with the opposition snapping at the heels of the Porsches in Yas Marina. Well, four hours around the Yas Marina circuit in Abu Dhabi, bright sunshine and high temperatures for the 35 car field. Minor dramas at the start for the 26 car, more major dramas behind for one of the United Autosports cars that uh, stopped more or less on the grid. Battles galore up and down the field in GT with the Aston Martins showing well at the start of the race and well in, well, very deep into the race too. Battles two down that main straight with the 57 car, the 51, getting themselves involved in a tangle until before we saw the race ending incident for the 97 TF uh, Oman racing car. 99 though, the Precot Herbeth car that took race one win in Dubai would come home with a, another run to the podium second, but it would be the untouchable pace eventually once the challenge of the Aston Martins had been dealt with. GPX Racing take the win here and are looking good for championship. 
In third place in LMP3, the number three car, the survivor of, after two early exits from the race from United Autosports, the three uh, Ligier. And behind, sorry, rather ahead, it was the two cars from Nielsen Racing. Matt Bell closed in rapidly on Colin Noble. We'll find out post-race whether it was team orders that actually preserved the order. But Colin Noble and Tony Wells thoroughly deserved a great result after traumas earlier in this season in Asia. Colin Noble and Tony Wells it is that will take the win. In uh, LMP2, Franco Colapinto uh, would come home second place, uh, bring home the 25 car in second place after some really good battles down through the field. Phoenix Racing here, Kelvin van der Linde uh, doing the business in the, in, the, in the last hour. 25 car it would be in second. 26 car would make it two G-Drive cars on the podium. But the overall winner from Georgia Sports, a fantastic run from the team. All credit to Sean Galel, who ran all bar one stint in this race to bring home a thoroughly deserved win uh, for Jota here in Abu Dhabi with four hours more to come tomorrow. Congratulations. That was one hell of a drive. No, um, I think, first of all, the win has to um, go through the guys who did an amazing job repairing the car. I think, you know, obviously it's unfortunate what happened yesterday. It's really unfortunate what happened yesterday. I think um, Tom, you know, he did a great job, but it's just unlucky with the car bottoming out. And then, um, again, man, the guys did an amazing job to turn the car over um, this morning and use qualifying as like a shakedown session even. Um, and the car was quick. Maybe not for one lap as the G-Drive guys, but for sure in in race space, we knew we were we were able to fight with them. Um, and yeah, I think today um, was a bit tiring, but I think in the end of the day, we'll take a win like this with a good margin than, than any, anything else. <laughs> good stuff. You certainly did. Sean Galil, thank Thanks, you very man. much you. Uh, for that. After a very different race in Abu Dhabi from the Dubai races before, there are some new faces uh, getting their trophies in Yas Marina. What we're going to say for now is from Oli Gavin and from me, good night from the Angel Le Mans series. We hope that you will join us tomorrow for the culmination of what's been one hell of a fortnight with the 2021 Angel Le Mans series. Good night. See you tomorrow.